Welcome to day two of the I Am The Cavalry track, 10th edition. Once again, try, if you weren't here yesterday, say happy birthday. Happy birthday. All right. Um, if you weren't here yesterday, uh, I'm going to briefly frame what's coming today before handing it over to our uh, British colleagues. Um, I'm Josh Corman. I'm one of the founders of I Am The Cavalry from August 1st, 10 years ago. Um, the idea is our dependence on connected technology is growing faster than our ability to secure it in areas affecting public safety, human life, economic, and national security. And we've been trying to change the world with the Coalition of the Willing uh, on wherever bits and bytes meet flesh and blood. Today's edition, um, just to outline the flow, is larger chunks than yesterday. Um, the first of which is the British are coming, um, and they've been uh, gracious enough to take that cheeky framing. Um, where uh, we don't just do U.S. policy, we have a, had a lot of U.S. policymakers, but we've been working internationally, and some of our best successes have been on basic IoT cybersecurity hygiene, uh, and we wanted to continue that work um, in a working session, in a listening session, which will be next. Um, number two, um, I'm really uh, emotionally looking forward to Dr. Suzanne Schwartz from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, uh, who regulates medical devices, has been the most courageous, creative, govy hacker teammate we could have ever hoped for. And we've moved mountains with her brave leadership and her team's brave leadership. So we're going to do some reflections on a decade of saving lives, um, how she met us, what her apprehensions were how gubbies want to be spoken to, what they're afraid of, so that if you want to change the world in the future, the first half is kind of her reflections on a decade of change, followed by extracting these into repeatable lessons and blueprints and roadmaps for how you might do the same, uh, with or without us. Uh, and she'll have some special super friends joining in that chorus and discussion. And then lastly, um, after the break, um, what do we call it? A hacker's guide to changing the world. Um, when we were reflecting on if we were to make a, a recipe book or a blueprint or a roadmap for how um, effective movements can happen that don't take nine or 10 years to get some results, if you could compress those things for the things that did and didn't work, what were some of the core beliefs or practices or schools of thought that influenced and affected those outcomes? So in a little bit to kind of give you signposts to things that you could go study up on. But also it could be one of the potential futures of the cavalry going forward is maybe a cavalry academy or an incubator and accelerator for plural change the world movements. We've already mentored a few and we might want to turn into a boot camp. So if it took us 10 years to do the things we mentioned yesterday, you know, how do we make those happen in three or five? Um, and how do we make it so that more people could do it without having to, you know, jump into the government occasionally. So the flow again is we're going to start with the British are coming, followed by a really deep dive on the successes with healthcare and the Food and Drug Administration to be extracted into lessons and then maybe a boot camp. Um, and probably it's going to quickly turn into a discussion from you as to what you think we should do and maybe who's willing and able to help. Um, before we completely transition, um, one of the most um, pivotal pre-launch teammates was Professor Andrea Matuition, law professor. She's been coming to DEF CON for God knows how long, but I think I met her when I started researching the rise of hacktivism and anonymous, so probably around DEF, Def CON 16 or so, 17, no, that would have been 18. Um, but she's been coming longer. Um, she has very different perspectives than we do, but was pivotal. And if you've ever heard me talk about the Cuyahoga River burning, uh, that's from her. Um, and she gave me a lot of encouragement at TalkCon and everything in the buildup um, and continues to be a pretty good ally. And if you like the fact that research has been largely decriminalized, you got to thank her. Uh, she knew how to formally petition the Library of Congress for uh, DMCA research exemptions, which were temporary, and then we made advocacy to make them permanent. So it does take a village to raise that child, but she played instrumental roles often, and is often the voice saying that if we don't somehow professionalize ourselves in some way, shape, or form to separate charlatans from good faith actors, it may be done for us. 
Um, so she gave me a, a couple of minutes of remarks and as one of the founding lights and brains and complementary skill sets in our team of Avengers, bless you, um, I wanted to quickly play an address from her that I didn't get to put in yesterday. Hi, I'm Andrea Matrician. I'm a professor at Penn State in the law school and in the engineering school. I've had the pleasure of watching the cavalry grow during the last 10 years, and I'd like to really congratulate Josh and everyone who's contributed to this worthy effort. Every little bit helps to make us safer. So I'll share two quick stories. One involves a great dinner with some interesting early conversations around software safety and the possible collaboration to a greater extent of the hacker community and government after ThoughtCon in 2013 in Chicago, and there may or may not have been a really unusually large boot of Hack for Shore beer involved. But some of those thoughts then ultimately made it into the DerbyCon meeting where the founding principles of the cavalry were sort of gelled together and the first group started work. At that meeting, I shared the story of the Cuyahoga River a river in Ohio that was literally on fire and galvanized different groups in society to push President Nixon to pass CERCLA, the Clean Air Act and the Clean Water Act, as well as create the Environmental Protection Agency. And so it was because of this river being on fire that we ultimately ended up with one of the most aggressive legal regimes around environmental law. And our environment, though not perfect, is significantly better than it would have otherwise been and the Cuyahoga River became usable again. So that's where I saw us heading and I think it's still where I see us heading. But for the second decade of the cavalry, I'd like to share another story. This is a story of two dams, one happy, one not happy at all. In 1928, the St. Francis Dam collapsed, killing hundreds of people. It collapsed because of shoddy engineering, a lack of maintenance, the ignoring of reports of third parties who were trying to avoid a disaster, and the absence of robust engineering standards inside the engineering community, and a deficit of legal liability for failures to take due care in the way that engineering projects were being built. In the wake of this tragedy of hundreds of people dying because of shoddy engineering, the engineering profession stepped up, started self-regulating, and started engaging in rigorous peer review. Also, liability was imposed. So by the time the Hoover Dam was built, just a few years later, the process of engineering looked completely different, and the public had faith in the Hoover Dam and in engineering again. So there's a model that we may want to think about as we enter the next decade of software and system security. And I hope the cavalry will continue to do good work. And thanks for letting me be part of today. All right, thank you, Andrea. And again, the, the, the spelling is difficult for pronunciation, but just say my tuition, my tuition, like tissue. Uh, so Andrea has been amazing and kitschy and wrote um, a seminal legal brief called the Internet of Bodies. Um, not so much that bits and bytes can lead to loss of life, which it does include, but also just as we increasingly become cyborgs, do you even own your images in your retinal scan or can they shut off the lease and the support on your uh, bionic arm? So uh, her, her belief when we met was if you could hack the legal journals, then when there is case law that comes to the courts and they search for these things, they're going to find things that we helped write. So there's lots of ways to be a hacker, and she continues to impress and amaze uh, both training her students, running the pilot lab for IoT, but also um, hacking the lexicon and a legal body of work uh, that could be brought to bear to introduce things like liability. So um, controversial topics, but um, a lot of these concepts made their way into the president's national cybersecurity strategy earlier. Um, so uh, again, uh, thank you if you're watching Andrea and uh, shortly I will welcome to the stage our next thing. But if you just got in the room, today's flow 
will be the British are coming, a conversation about engaging us for good ideas on some, some policy they're considering. Number two will be reflections on a decade of saving lives with the Food and Drug Administration, uh, with Suzanne and her amazing team and recipes for how to repeat that. And then after the break, or in the afternoon, we're gonna do a hacker's guide to changing the world. So thank you for being here. I'm gonna transition now to our next panel.